Welcome back, viewers. Today, we will be testing the Kanoon crossover indicator. But before we do, if you have not watched my first video and the videos after that, you need to go do that right now. Here at the Academy of Forex, we are building the best trading system possible as a team. And as a team, we will all profit from it when we are done. You can find a link to the first video down in the description below. You can also find a link to our Discord server so that way we can all discuss testing indicators and building our trading system. And lastly, you can find a link below to TradingView. If you sign up for a paid account, you will save a little bit of money using the link below. All right, as I said, today we will be testing the Kanoon crossover indicator. But before we do, I wanted to put the indicator scoreboard up for everyone to see. So to date, we have tested 113 indicators. And out of those 113 indicators, 44 of them have been winners, which means that they have met or exceeded the 60% win-loss ratio threshold that we have set for them. The best ones so far were able to achieve a 100% win rate. Now you need to go back and watch those videos to understand the context of how they were able to achieve that. But as we are working on building the best trading system possible, you could take any one of those 44 indicators and get out there and start potentially profitably trading the markets with them now. So go back and watch those videos, make a list of those indicators, and get out there and see what you can do with them. But stick with us here as we work on maximizing your trading profits. Alright, as I said, today's indicator is the Kanoon crossover indicator. I believe I'm saying that correctly. Uh, I've looked it up a few times and that seems to be the, the correct uh, phrasing of the name Kanoon. Um, and so if I'm not saying it correctly, I apologize, but uh, it just seems to be the best way to say it. So anyways, it is a TradingView created, a TradingView member created indicator. And so of course you can find a link to it down below in the description. Um, the creator didn't really give a whole lot of explanation as to uh, the full calculations of how the indicator works uh, but basically we have um, uh, a two-line cross essentially and so um, I don't know let me go back and look here Yeah, it is. It is just a uh, it is just a basic two line cross. For some reason, I was thinking that um, there's more to it than that, but there is not. And so, um, yeah, like I said, basically, it is a two line cross. The creator um, coded in where we get uh, signals to go short and to go long. And so you see this little dot here, this little red dot. That is a a signal to go short see this little green dot here that is a signal to go long so uh, pretty simple setup I think I am like usual going to go in modify a few things here Yeah, so it is centered around the EMA, the exponential moving average, um, which is interesting. Uh, it does look like it um, has a, uh, a few other aspects um, built into it as well. And so um, it doesn't seem to be just strictly a, a, 
uh, EMA crossover. But even if it was, if you remember, as I said before, the EMA was actually the only moving average when we did a um, the uh, moving average test, the moving average head-to-head. -head. It was the only moving average that was able to achieve a 60% or more uh, win ratio. And so um, it is my opinion that if we were going to use any moving average um, to uh, trade with, that it should be the exponential moving average. Um, and so it's only fitting that this one uses that. And like I said, it seemed like there were some other um, calculations um, in there as well, smoothing and some other things uh, to uh, possibly give it a little bit of an edge. Now, when we did the moving average test, we did it on price break and only price break, if I remember right. I think it was, we did it just off the price break. And so um, this one's a little bit different in that it's not the price break, it's actually the two MAs crossing. And so um, it's possible that if we were able to achieve a 60% win rate on um, just the exponential moving average uh, and price action, maybe uh, we could dial it in, maybe they've dialed it in with this indicator a little bit to give us some better odds. And so uh, now as you've seen, I went in and I turned off some of the visuals of the indicator just because it, it kind of clogs up the chart some. Um, again, that's just my preference. Um, let's see, see if we can turn that label off. Yep, there we go. Um, and so yeah, I, I just cleaned it up a little bit. I uh, took some of the visuals out of it so that way it doesn't clog up the chart as much. And uh, if you've watched um, the rest of my videos and you know, I really don't like um, indicators that change the uh, bar colors. And so, um, I mean, it's one thing to have, like I've coded out um, indicators before where um, they, on, on just one specific bar, it would change the color of that bar. And so um, that's that's not too bad. I don't mind that as much. Um, it gives you a pretty clear, defined, um, you know, visual signal as to when um, something is taking place. But when it changes all the bar colors, um, I, I really don't like that because again, I pay attention to price action. I pay attention to what the bars are doing: red bars, green bars, big bars, little bars. Um, support and resistance and so on and so um, it gets frustrating when I'm trying to um, keep an eye on price action what's going on with the candles and um, yeah all of them are like purple and yellow and blue and you know changing all kinds of crazy crazy different colors so again that's just my preference it's just the way that I like to do it um, all of you out there you can do it however you want to do it however it works for you um, is a perfectly valid way to use indicators. And so, um, all right, with all that being said, now that I've rambled on for a while, um, let's get to testing this again. Green dot is a, a long signal. Red dot is a short signal. Um, and we will play it out here. I'll probably play around price action a little bit here and um, a little bit of price action reading. Um, I know, again, some of you out there, some of the viewers are saying, ah, you know, I'm sick of the price action, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, it helps some people. I've had also people say that, hey, I love the price action reading. And so, you know, if you don't like hearing the price action reading, then, you know, go to the part of the video that, um, you know, best benefits you. Um, and if it's price action reading that you like and benefits you that way, then watch it. If not, then don't. It's totally up to you guys, but I don't want to exclude people um, just because a few of you out there aren't, um, you know, thrilled about hearing price action. And so, all right. So, um, yeah, price action. We've had a strong push up here. You can see that we're having a strong pullback right here. 
it's rounded up and over really strong pullback into this area um, nothing really set in stone yet but it's always a good idea to mark off areas like this um, once you see something kind of potentially taking place and then you can look back here it made a touch there um, doesn't look like it did much there looks like it had a lot of interaction here so could be a valid area um, again, this is not a really good setup as far as price action goes. Our indicator isn't giving us any kind of signal. So let's play it forward a little bit and see what happens. All right, so now we're kind of starting to set up in um, one of my favorite price action patterns. And um, I call this the uh, cup and handle. Again, I know there's some of you out there who say, ah, oh, that's not a real cup and handle. But you know, I kind of beg to differ. Um, I'm sure that if you broke this down into a smaller time frame, you would see the long, exaggerated cup and handle pattern um, that tends to be a little bit more uh, traditional style. Um, but you can see here that it's definitely setting up, and it, it's a you know, it's upside down. But um, we get this, and I marked it out on the uh, the Ichimoku uh video that it did so you have this push here and i i outline that strong push because you really want to have a strong push up into or push down into this kind of a price action pattern if it happens on you know a very short push like this then it doesn't seem uh it doesn't tend to work out quite as well and so we have that push there and then we have it um, coming down here and uh, slight pull back into this area and then often what we see is that it will come down to this area breaking through this area right here and so you can see here that it is a cup and handle style pattern um, now if price action broke down below this purple line so uh, generally what you would do is you would set a um, an order to go short right below that zone right there and if it comes down and breaks into that triggers your uh, entry and then you would write it down short and try to take the 90 pip take profit um, again it doesn't always work but i see this pattern a lot a lot a lot a lot and more often than not whenever i see it especially at a point where it's pushed up really strong at a significant point of um of support and resistance then um, it generally works out Again, there's no guarantees. You're definitely going to take some losses in trading. There's no ways to get around that. Um, but um, you're looking for things that work more often than they don't. So let's play it out here a little bit and see what happens. Oh, and so now at this point, this pattern becomes invalid. So you want to see it happen pretty much immediately with this pattern. And so since it didn't, now we have to uh, question what exactly is price action going to do here. And so um, it's one of those situations where you get, um, you have less of a chance of something working out now. If it would have broke down instantly into that area uh, right off these candles, then uh, that's a really good sign, but the fact that it pulled back up and is now bouncing around in this area is not a great sign. It really could go either way. And as I've said, there are people who will set orders above and below channels like this. And so um, what you're seeing here is a channel consolidation. And if it breaks up above with some kind of momentum, then it could continue upwards. If it breaks down below with some kind of momentum, then it could continue downwards. And that's generally what we see. But you 
also often see that it breaks up. We'll do a fake out and have a strong pull back and sometimes wipe out a whole bunch of stop losses before it then continues off in the direction that it was heading to in the first place. So now you can see now that so let's look at our indicator first because it threw a short signal right there which was interesting because it was breaking right below that area that we kind of marked out there i am going to delete out that line right there i'm going to measure this out and unfortunately we would have gotten stopped out so there's a perfect example of what i was referring to so it broke down it triggered a whole bunch of people into a short position pulled back rather significantly uh, wiping out a whole bunch of people stops and stopping them out before it turned around and shot back down in the original direction that we were looking to go in super frustrating when you see that happen so there we go we had a loss there then we picked up a short right here which gave us a loss then or a, uh, a long right there I'm sorry gave us a loss and then a short right there that eventually called a good uh, called a good uh, a trend and got us in all right playing it forward here a little bit this video is already getting a little long so I'm not gonna do much with price action uh, for the rest of the video Let's see we picked up a long signal right there looks like it was a decent long got us in to take profit there's a short signal right there looks like another decent call got us in to take profit playing it forward here and you see price action is bouncing along that area right there it's come down and hit this zone multiple times so the more times it comes down and bounces off that zone is more likely that it's going to take off to the upside uh, but you don't want to trade it just off of that because it is very likely that it just keeps retesting this area and when it does finally break it it's going to break it and drop hard let's see so we picked up a long right there it's played out a little bit farther here nope looks like we would have probably got stopped out on that one and yeah, we didn't get to take profit so that one not so great but we picked up a short right there let's play it out a little bit farther here and we picked up a decent short there's a long there see what it does man it is just not able to pick up any kind of reasonable upward movement keeps trying keeps breaking getting a, a a long signal then drops out gets a long signal and then drops out so it's really struggling all right let's see here so we picked up a short there which probably wouldn't have stopped us out but we got a long there and so unfortunately that would have dictated that we stopped out of the move then we picked up a short there that eventually eventually got us to where we wanted to go 
All right, plugging along here, and you see it just keeps slowly stair-stepping its way down. It's really having a hard time getting any kind of upward momentum here. It's like as soon as we get the signal to go long, it pulls back. Pulls back hard and stops us out. Then we pick up a short and it works. Keep having that happen over and over here. Give us a long, pulled back, stopped us out, give us a short, one. Did over here, give us a long, stopped us out. Uh, picked up a short here, unfortunately stopped us out, but did here another long before it pulled back giving us a short that ended up winning there we go we finally picked up a long that got us to take profit we're into October now getting near the end of the year there is a short signal and it looks like it got us to nope just a little shy bummer and it really just does not want to dedicate itself to moving in one direction it really just keeps whipsawing like strong waves going on here there's a long and we got a winner on that one. Good, good. Finally got some kind of dedication to a move there. After it uh, triple bottomed here. Boom, 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 boom. All right, we're into December. Let's see what it's going to do. Looks like it's yeah, wanting to go short now. Give us a short signal there. Let's see if it can follow through. It did. Good, good. And almost. There we go. That is the end of the year there. All right. Let's see here. Let's count these out. See what we got. So one, two, three, four, five. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17. And we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 9 winning trades. And so, yeah, that's not going to meet the 60% criteria. Fell just a little short. Um, and yeah, it's, it's uh, it's interesting. Uh, so far, I've yet to, I've yet to see an indicator that is, um, like strongly based around moving averages, like moving average crosses that's been able to do better than, uh, the same moving average that we did price action break testing on. Um, it's interesting. Like it, it seems like every time the price action uh, break of the moving average either uh, is is almost exactly equal to the win rate percentage or uh, does better. And so here's another example of that where um, we have a indicator based off of the EMA, the EMA, which was able to uh, achieve a 60% win rate. And um, the EMA crossover version uh, that this indicator is, was not able to achieve the same win rate. Now, I've seen this on a few other indicators as well um, that 
kind of focus all the calculations around a specific moving average where um, we've tested it with a price break and like I said either um, the price break does better or it's almost exactly dead even as far as the the win ratio goes but a different number of trades and so um, yeah it's it's interesting um, it's, it's starting to look like from what I can tell that the price action break the price action um, break moving average uh, you know strategy is um, so far the best way to trade an EMA or, or a, a moving average I'm sorry not the, not the EMA itself a moving average in general um, specifically the EMA because it, it was our winner when we did the the head-to-head -head, um, test of, a, of the moving averages and so um, yeah just just one of them notes that I've I've noticed um, over time um, paying more attention to the moving averages and indicators that are based around them so um, yeah like I said um, it's going on the no list it didn't meet the 60% criteria um, all in all, you know, it did all right, but it, you know, wasn't anything spectacular. Um, wasn't able to meet the 60% criteria, and so obviously wasn't that great. Uh, was really getting us into, you know, a lot of losses. Like I said, really, like, it's calling those, you know, trades, like, right at the peak of a um, reversal area, and so... Yeah, just didn't do too great. So, yep, that's it. So we'll cut the video here and we will move on to the next indicator from here. If you have not already, like this video, comment below, subscribe to the channel, and turn on the bell notification so that way you are notified anytime I post a new video. As part of the team, it's important that you are seeing the new videos as they come out so you know what it is that we are discussing and what indicators we are testing, have tested, and have not tested. Also, like usual, there is a link below in the description to the Discord server. You can join us on Discord so that way we can further discuss the indicators and have discussions as we move forward building our trading system. And lastly, like usual, there is a link below to TradingView. If you like what you see whenever I use TradingView and you are interested in signing up for TradingView, if you use the link below and sign up for a paid account, you will save a little bit of money. So, all right, everybody, I will see you.